Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are ready to continue in our story of Farmer Boy, and we are moving on to Chapter 20, which is the late harvest. Remember yesterday, we talked about the early harvest and the things that they harvested in what they called the early harvest, and some of those things were the hay and the oats and the beans and the peas, and now we're moving into the late harvest, and the late harvest includes things such as apples, pumpkins, and potatoes, those sorts of things. Okay, we are on page 240 if you're following along in the physical copy of the book, and it is chapter 20, Harvest Mo Late Harvest, I'm sorry, When if you're following along in the PDF file. Now the harvest moon shone round and yellow over the fields at night, and there was a frosty chill in the air. All the corn was cut and stood in tall shocks. The moon cast their black shadows on the ground where the pumpkins lay naked above their withered leaves. Elmanzo's milk-fed pumpkin was enormous. He cut it carefully from the vine, but he could not lift it. He could not even roll it over. Father lifted it into the wagon and carefully hauled it to the barn and laid it on some hay to wait until county fair time. All the other pumpkins Elmanzo rolled into piles and Father hauled them to the barn. The best ones were put in the cellar to make pumpkin pies and the rest were piled on the south barn floor. Every night, Elmanzo cut up some of them with a hatchet and fed them to the cows and the calves and the oxen. The apples were ripe. Elmanzo and Royal and Father set ladders against the trees and they climbed into the leafy tops. They picked every perfect apple carefully and laid it in a basket. Father drove the wagon full of baskets slowly to the house and Elmanzo helped carry the baskets down cellar, down to the cellar and laid the apples carefully in the apple bins. They didn't bruise one apple, for a bruised apple will rot, and one rotten apple will spoil a whole bin. The cellars began to have its winter smell of apples and preserves. Mother's milk pans had been moved upstairs to the pantry till spring came again. After the perfect apples had all been picked, Elmanzo and Royal could shake the trees. This was fun. They shook the trees with all their might, and the apples came rattling down like hail. They picked them up and threw them into the wagon. They were only cider apples. Elmanzo took a bite out of one whenever he wanted to. Now it was time to gather the garden stuff. Father hauled the apples away to the cider mill, but Elmanzo had to stay home, pulling beets and turnips and parsnips and carrying them down to the cellar. He pulled the onions, and Alice braided their, long dry, their dry tops into long braids. The round onions hung thick on both sides of the braids, and Mother hung them in the attic. Almanzo pulled the pepper plants while Alice threaded her darning needles and strung red peppers like beads on a string. They were hung up beside the onions. Father came back that night with two big hogshead of cider. Cite a, hog, a hogshead is a big barrel. There was plenty of cider to last until next apple harvest. Next morning, a cold wind was blowing and storm clouds were rolling up against the gray sky. Father looked worried. The carrots and potatoes must be dug and quickly. Almanzo put on his socks and moccasins, his cap and his coat and his mittens, and Alice put on her hood and the shawl. She was going to help. Father hitched Bess and Beauty to the plow and they turned a furrow away from each side of the long rows of carrots. This left the carrots standing in a thin ridge of earth so they were easy to pull. Elmanzo and Alice pulled them as fast as they could, and Royal cut off the feathery tops and threw the carrots into the wagon. Father hauled them to the house and shoveled them down a chute into the carrot bins in the cellar. The little red seeds that Elmanzo and Alice had planted had grown into 200 bushels of carrots. Mother could cook all she wanted, and the horses and the cows could eat raw carrots all winter. Lazy John came to help with the potato digging. Father and John dug the potatoes with hoes while Alice and Almanzo picked them up and put them in baskets and emptied the baskets into a wagon. Royal left an empty wagon in the field while he hauled the full one to the house and shoveled potatoes through the cellar window into the potato bins. Almanzo and Alice hurried to fill the empty wagon while he was gone. They hardly stopped at noon to eat. They worked till night until it was too dark to see. If they didn't get the potatoes into the cellar before the ground froze, all of last year's work in the potato field would be lost. Father would have to buy potatoes. 
I never saw such weather for this time of year, father said. Early in the morning before the sun rose, they were hard at work again. The sun did not rise at all that day. Thick gray clouds hung low overhead, and the ground was cold, and the potatoes were cold, and a sharp cold wind blew gritty dust into Almanzo's eyes. He and Alice were sleepy. They tried to hurry, but their fingers were so cold that they fumbled and they dropped potatoes. Alice said, my nose is cold. We have earmuffs. Why can't we have nose muffs? Elmanzo told father that they were cold, and father told him, get a hustle on, son. Exercise will keep you warm. They tried, but they were too cold to hustle very fast. The next time father came digging near them, he said, make a bonfire of dry potato tops, Elmanzo. That will warm you. So Alice and Elmanzo gathered an enormous pile of potato tops. Father gave Elmanzo a match, and he lighted the bonfire. The little flame grabbed a dry leaf, and then it ran eagerly up a stem, and it crackled and spread and rushed, roaring into the air. It seemed to make the whole field warmer. For a long time, they all worked busily. Whenever Almanzo was too cold, he ran and piled more potatoes on top of the potato tops on the fire, not potatoes. Alice held out her grubby hands to warm them, and the fire shone on her face like sunshine. I'm hungry, Almanzo said. So be I, said Alice. It must be almost dinner time. Elmanzo couldn't tell by the shadows because there was no sunshine. They worked and they worked, but they still did not hear the dinner bell. Elmanzo was all hollow inside. He said to Alice, before we get to the end of this row, we'll hear it. But they didn't. Elmanzo decided something must have happened to the horn, and he said to Father, I guess it's dinner time. John laughed at him, and Father said, it's hardly the middle of the morning, son. Elmanzo went on picking potatoes, and then father called, put a potato in the ashes, Elmanzo. That'll take the edge off your appetite. Elmanzo put two big potatoes in the hot ashes, one for him and one for Alice. He piled hot ashes over them and piled more potato tops on the fire. He knew he should go back to work, but he stood in the pleasant heat, waiting for the potatoes to bake. He did not feel comfortable in his mind, but he felt warm inside, and he said to himself, I have to stay here to roast the potatoes. He felt bad because he was letting Alice work all alone. But then he thought, I'm busy roasting a potato for her. Suddenly, he heard a soft hissing puff and something hit his face. It stuck on his face, scalding and hot. He yelled and he yelled. The pain was terrible and he could not see. He heard shouts and running. Big hands snatched his hands from his face and father's hands tipped back his head. Lazy John was talking. French and Alice was crying, Oh, father, oh, father, open your eyes, son, father said. Elmanzo tried, but he could only get one open. Father's son pushed up the other eyelid and it hurt. Father said, It's all right, the eyes not hurt. One of the roasting potatoes had exploded and the scalding hot inside of it had hit Elmanzo, but the eyelid had closed in time. Only the eyelid and his cheek were burned. Father tied his handkerchief over the eye, and he and Lazy John went back to work. Elmanzo hadn't known that anything could hurt that, like that burn, but he told Alice that it didn't hurt very much. He took a stick and he dug the other potato out of the ashes. I guess it's your potato, he snuffed. He was not crying, only the tears kept running out of his eyes and down the inside of his nose. No, it's yours, said Alice. It was my potato that exploded. How do you know which it was, Elmanzo asked. This one's yours because you're hurt and I'm not hungry anyway. You're ver not very hungry, said Alice. You're as hungry as I be, said Elmanzo. He could not bear to be selfish anymore. You eat half, he told Alice, and I'll eat half. The potato was burned black outside, but the inside was white and mealy and a most delicious baked potato smell steamed out of it. They let it cool a little, and then they gnawed the inside out of the black crust. It was the best potato they had ever eaten. They felt better, and they went back to work. Elmanzo's face was blistered, and his eye was swelled shut. But Mother put a poultice on it at noon and another at night, and the next day, it did not hurt so much. Just after dark on the third day, he and Alice followed the last load of potatoes to the house. The weather was growing colder every minute. Father shoveled the potatoes into the cellar by lantern light, while Royal and Omanzo did all of the chores. They had barely saved their potatoes. That very night, the ground froze. 
A miss is as good as a mile, mother said. But father shook his head. Too close to suit me, he said. Next thing will be snow. We have to hustle to get the beans and the corns under cover. He put the hay rack on the wagon, and Royal and Omanzo helped him haul the beans. They pulled up the bean stakes and laid them in the wagon, beans and all. They worked carefully, for a jar would shake the beans out of the dry pods and waste them. When they had piled all of the beans on the south barn floor, they hauled in the shocks of corn. The crops had been so good that even father's great barn roofs would not shelter all of the harvest. Several loads of corn shocks had to be put in the barnyard, and father made a fence around them to keep them safe from the young cattle. All of the harvest was in now. Cellar and attic in the barns were stuffed to bursting. Plenty of food and plenty of feed for all of the stock was stored away for the winter. Everyone could stop working for a while and have a good time at the county fair, which we will read about next week. Let's talk a little bit about this chapter. What type of crops do they store in their cellar? Yep, they store apples, they store their potatoes, they store their carrots, all of those things are stored in the cellar. What about the barn? What do they put in the barn? Pumpkins, beans, corn. Yes, that's what they put in the barn. How about in the attic? Onions and peppers. That's what they dry in the attic, the onions and peppers. How is each type of these foods used? All of the apples that are stored in the cellar are the perfect apples that were picked very carefully so they would not bruise. And the rest of the apples, they took to the cider mill, so they didn't have to worry about those. The potatoes that are stored in the cellar are potatoes that they will eat. And the carrots that are stored in the cellar, they will eat those and they will also share those with the horses so that they can have raw carrots all year long. What do you think mother means when she said a miss is as good as a mile? Exactly. She means they did get the harvest in, in time before the ground froze. And it didn't really matter if they got it in two weeks before the ground froze or if they got it in the day before the ground froze because a miss is as good as a mile. It missed them. Why does, oh, we already answered that question. Why is father in such a hurry to harvest the potatoes? Exactly. When the ground freezes, the potatoes can't be harvested anymore. They're no good. How can Almanzo usually tell the time of day when he's outside? He can tell it by where the sun is in the sky, the position of the sun in the sky. Why doesn't this method work when they're digging potatoes? Because there is no sun. It's a cloudy day. You got that right. How did Almanzo get blistered? How did he get burned? He was cooking a potato for he and Alice. And instead of going back to work, he decided he would stay and watch the potatoes roast. And one of them exploded and the insides shot up into his face. Why does Almanzo insist on sharing that remaining potato with Alice? Why doesn't he just eat it himself? Because he doesn't feel so much like being selfish anymore, does he? After the potato exploded in his face. Okay, let's go ahead and take some notes. Put your heading on your interactive notebook. Your name. The date, today's date is 4 8 21. And the lesson, today's lesson is chapter 20. Okay, our first definition is harvest moon. We already learned about this in science. Harvest moon. Let's go ahead and actually define it. Harvest moon. It's a full moon. Sorry. The full moon that occurs or happens nearest the autumnal equinox. Say it. The full moon that occurs nearest the autumnal equinox. Say it. The full moon that occurs nearest the autumnal equinox. Say it as you're writing it down. The full, don't worry, I'll help you. 
moon that occurs nearest the autumnal, and that's spelled ah, that we do not use at the end of English words, tum, basic code, al, now, autumn now, autumn now, equinox. We're going to use e, qu, never use q without u, equin, equin, ox, equinox. Okay, the second um, vocabulary word is hogshead. It's a, it's a compound word spelled exactly like you think. Hogs head, hogshead. A large barrel or cast with a capacity ranging from 63 to 140 gallons. Say it. A large barrel or cast with a capacity ranging from 63 to 140 gallons. Say it. A large barrel or cast with a capacity ranging from 63 to 140 gallons. Say it as you're writing it down. A large barrel or cast, and that's Ask, cask, ek at the end. With a capacity, ooh, that's one of our one of our um, math words, ranging from sixty three to one hundred and forty gallons. And then finally, our last vocabulary word is poultice. And that's spelled out, out, oh, uh, uh, pole, tis. And we're going to use kss to make that sound, poultice. A soft, moist pack of herbal, of medicinal herbs applied to a wound to aid in healing. Say it. A soft, moist pack of medicinal herbs applied to a wound to aid in healing. Say it. A soft, moist pack of medicinal herbs applied to a wound to aid in healing. Say it as you're writing it down. A soft, moist pack of medicinal is spelled med i sin k s al medicinal herbs and we know that is spelled with a silent because that was one of our spelling words applied app applied i think that was a spelling word too to a wound we're going to use ow o u u to make the oo sound, a wound, to aid in healing. We're going to use e -a, a All right, now we got a quote. We start it with quotation marks. All the harvest was in now. That's the first sentence. All the harvest was in now. All the harvest was in. Now, oops, remember we're doing this with cursive writing. All the harvest was in. Now, there's a comma after in, period after now. Cellar and attic in the barns were stuffed to bursting. Say it. Cellar and attic and the barns were stuffed to bursting. Say it. Cellar and attic and barns were stuffed to bursting. Say it as you write it down. Cellar 
and attic. And the barns. Were stuffed to bursting and that's our next sentence period at the end plenty of food and plenty of feed for all of the stock was stored away for the winter say it Plenty of food and plenty of feed for all of the stock was stored away for the winter. Say it. Plenty of food and plenty of feed for all of the stock was stored away for the winter. Say it as you're writing it down. Plenty of food. comma, and plenty of feed for the stock, I'm going to put a comma there, was stored away for the winter, was stored away for the winter. And you put your period, you end your quotation marks. Okay, those are the notes we've got for today. Another half sheet, that's kind of nice, right? Makes it easier for you to see. If you need to pause the video so you can make sure that you have all the notes, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, let it continue to run, and I will be back next week. Later today, you can complete the quotation page. You are going to need to go um, back into the chapters and find who said those quotes if you cannot remember. And then tomorrow, you have a checkpoint that you need to take over, I don't think it's chapters 14 through 20. And it is pretty short checkpoint. It has matching, is entire thing is matching. And two, four, six, eight, there's only 10 to match. There are a couple vocabulary words and the rest are matching the person with what happened. So let's think about this. Who helps out Almanzo by patching up the wallpaper? Yep, that's Eliza Jane. That's his sister, Eliza Jane. Almanzo shares the potato with this sister since she was busy working without him. Who is that? Yep, Alice, you know that too. What do we call a large barrel or a cast with a capacity ranging from 63 to 140 gallons? We call that a hogshead. Who tricks the men when they are tricks the men when they are sheep shearing by hiding a sheep in the loft? Almanzo does that. Mm -hmm. Who makes excellent butter? You got it, mother. Who gives Almando a half dollar and encourages him to use it wisely? That would be father. Who gets her jaws stuck together after eating candy? Yes, that's Lucy the pig. Who and Eliza Jane were in charge of their younger siblings when the parents went on vacation? Royal. Mm -hmm. What do we call a farm tool with a long curved blade for cutting grass to make hay? That is a Sith. And what is the moon, the full moon that occurs nearest the autumnal equinox? Just did that one today. That is a harvest moon. You guys got this. You can do it. All right. You have a great day. And I'll see you next week. Bye.